hard here. Hallelujah. Of course, it got lost. Gotta find it. My notes got. starting there tonight, you know, we're moving on, we're moving up, we're just going and going and going, this is, okay, wow, I like the heifer there, <laughs> okay, found it. You know, it's just got to get big. Matthew chapter 24, we're going to go there in a minute, but we're going we're to move, we're going to change the gear, switch them just a little bit tonight, and we're going to go moving over more towards the tribulation period. If it's, if it's the first time you're here, we've been studying about the uh, last days. Amen. Amen. And the more I look around, the more I see, the more I believe right. that we are in the last days. Yep. Right. Amen. Right. Either I'm strong. Well, these guys like it short. <laughs> anyway, so but anyway, we started out. We started out several months ago looking at the last days. We looked at the seven dispensations. You know, he said, "I would not have you ignorant, brethren." And uh, we looked at them. We seen the common thread between the seven uh, dispensations. Then we looked at the mystery dispensation, what we're living in now, the church age, and we talked about different things. The pearl of great price. And then we talked about the parable of the vineyard, which we're going to look again at tonight just for a minute. Then we moved into the rapture. Of the, actually, before the rapture of the church, we talked about Daniel 70 weeks. And I did it kind of out of order. Usually when I do this, I do like dispensations, the mystery, the rapture, the judgment seat of Christ, and then Daniel. But I, I just changed it around that I want to get Daniel's in there first. So we can refer back to it. Amen. Okay? Yeah. If we have to. So then we talked about the rapture of the church. That's where we were for the last few weeks. Then last week we talked about the judgment seat of Christ. Yeah. And uh, what that means to us as believers. How all the good works we do while we're in fellowship on the earth is what's going to be counted when we go into heaven. All the good works we do while we're out of fellowship with God are going to get burned up. Yeah. But we're going to get to heaven. That's the good part. Amen. Getting to heaven. Getting there and, and being part of the party. Alright? And then, tonight we're going to look at the uh, tribulation. Start to look at it anyhow, okay? I don't know how far we're going to get. But uh, again, if you have your Bibles, I told you to turn to Matthew chapter 21. 21 or 22? 21. I said around 21, 22. I just had to... Well, 24, we're going to 24. That's that's my goal. You know, you have to set a goal in life. Mm -hmm. And my goal, short goal for tonight is to get to Matthew chapter 24. If we're going to get, if we get there, that'll be good. But we'll go back to that vineyard, the parable we talked about, the vineyard. You don't remember that one, right? Well, we want to do that because we're setting something up. And now, when you look at Matthew chapter 21, chapter 22, chapter 23, chapter 24... Particularly chapter 24 and chapter 25 talk about the tribulation and they talk about the second coming of Jesus. But now Jesus, in, from chapters 21 to 22, Jesus is specifically be, speaking to the Jewish Pharisees, the Sadducees, and those that really didn't believe in him. And he keeps hitting them with parables, okay? Because they thought, first of all, they thought Jesus was possessed of a devil. All right? They thought... Uh, uh, you know, that he was a false prophet. And really, it all been, turned out to be that they thought he was trying to steal their thunder. Not realizing, for all these thousands of years, the law was about Jesus coming and fulfilling it. Mm -hmm. But, you know, not for anything. I'll just take a little side journey. They were making big bucks off the law. Yeah. You know, they were making big bucks. The, if, you, if you look back at the Jewish... Pharisees and the Sadducees, they were very wealthy men. Mm -hmm. If you even look today to the, to the, the rabbis in, in, in New York and even in Lakewood, they are extremely wealthy individuals mm -hmm. from what they do. 
It's amazing, though, when you get a guy like a Creflo Dollar or Kenneth Copeland or Keith Moore who fly their own jet, everybody yells, they're thieves, they're thieves, you know what I mean? They shouldn't be doing that. But we never hear that about other... Actually, I was reading a story the other day, a news article about a church in New York City that they threw, they threw the pastor out. It was a woman pastor. It was a big church. I don't know if it was an interdenom, non-denominant. I don't know what it was. But she was into the, the LBGT movement. And uh, they, went on a, they went out of town to a conference, and she did something that really she shouldn't have done. But that's not what I want to talk about. They asked, they, the congregation wanted her out for what she did. And, uh, but she was making, are you ready for this? It's, I almost fell off my chair when I was reading. She was making $250,000 a year salary, plus a $10,000 a month housing allowance, and she was asking for a $150,000 a year raise, and they were going to give it to her until she went out of town and did something she shouldn't have done. Hello? Mm -hmm. So, Jesus is talking to the religious people, okay? Remember, there's us and religious people. There's those that love the word, do the word, or in the word, love Jesus, want to do his will, want him to work through their life, want yeah, the Holy amen. Spirit to work through their lives. And then there's there are those that it's a job. You know, Bob Yandy, who will be here in November, once said, he said, he said, when he first learned the faith, he was the, he was the dean of Rhema years, way back in the uh, early, like in the late 70s. And, and he was learning the word of faith, and he actually worked for Kenneth Hagin Ministries. And he was their audio guy. He would record all of Brother Hagin, stuff like that. And he said, when he started, and he didn't know anything. He just went there. He went to a Bible school in Oklahoma, got a job with Kenneth Hagin. Didn't know anything about the word of faith or anything like that, but just being there, he's recording every sermon that Brother Hagen ever did. He said, I love this job so much, I don't even care if I get paid. Wow. When you get to that point, when you make a get, let me put it to you this way, when you make a giving instead of a living, Amen. then you're happy. Amen. Amen. When you make a giving instead of a living, because most people, their famous phrase, I see it on cars, I owe, I owe, off to work, I go. So, <laughs> anyway, did you get to the uh, Matthew chapter 21, verse 33? Amen. It goes, hear, hear another parable. There was a certain landholder. He, and the landholder was God, okay, who planted a vineyard. The vineyard is the gospel, is the good news that we preach, okay? And set a hedge around it and dug a wine press in it and built a tower. So what he did now, what he did, he, he built a, he protect, God protects the word. The word is a protector. Amen. Okay, in that hedge, one version called it a watchtower. That watchtower is the protection of the word of God. So here we have, in these verses of scripture, Jesus is God, Jesus is saying, God came. He's the landowner. He, he built the vineyard, which is the gospel. He put a hedge around it. And, and he leased it to the vine dressers. Now, the vine dressers are the Jewish people. Okay, so Jesus came, did this, leased it to the vine dressers, and went into a far country. Now, when vintage time drew near, he sent his servants. The servants are the Old Testament prophets, okay? He sent his prophets to the vineyard that they might receive its fruit. And the vine dressers, okay, took, that, that's again, that's the Jewish nation, took his servants, beat one, killed one, and stoned another. And he sent other servants, other pro, more prophets, really. The, the servants were the prophets, more than the first, and they did likewise to them. Last of all, he sent his son, and, and the son represents Jesus. So the landowner's God, the vineyard's the gospel, in the vine dress, there's those that were supposed to take the gospel and put it out to the world where the Jewish nation, but they didn't. Okay? So finally he sends his prophets and warns them. We see that throughout the Old Testament. You know, what we have to do, Israel, the nation of Israel through the Old Testament, 
was a signpost to the rest of the world on the faithfulness of God and how God would take care of people. You know, they, and they were so afraid of every little thing that was happening that it took them 40 years to get to where they were supposed to go because of fear, and the people were waiting 40 years to get destroyed. <laughs> it says it in the book of Joshua. They waited 40 years. They saw what God did for the Israelites. They saw Pharaoh's army drowned in the Red Sea. They saw the, the manna coming down. They saw the quail. They watched these people for 40 years and thinking, we're next on the agenda. <laughs> And all the, the signposts did was complain and murmur instead of doing what God asked them to do. Kind of sounds like a lot of people in church. Yeah. All they do is murmur and complain instead of doing what God has told them to do. Amen. Thank you for that hearty. <laughs> okay. So last of all, he sent, verse 37, sent his son Jesus to them saying, and, and to them, saying, they will respect my son. But when the vine dressers saw the son, they said among themselves, this is the heir, come, let's kill him and seize his inheritance. So they took him, cast him out of the vineyard, killed him. Therefore, when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to these vine dressers? Again, the Jewish nation. They said to him, he will destroy those wicked men miserably and lease the vineyard to other vine dressers. That's really important. If you have some underlined that other, he's going to lease the vineyard to other vine dressers. Well, here's a news flash for people that don't understand some of these parables. The church, the gospel, is the vineyard. Okay? The vine dressers are us Amen. now. And here's what he tells them. And it will render to him fruits in their seasons. He will he leaves it, the vineyard to other vine dressers and will render to him, who will render to him the fruits of their season. Now Jesus said, have you never read the scriptures? The stone, Jesus, which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone, the foundation. Remember last week we talked about how Paul says, I build a foundation. That foundation, that cornerstone, that capstone is Jesus. Amen. Okay? That's Jesus Christ. That's the foundation. And uh, this is the Lord's doing and it is marvelous in our eyes. Therefore I say to you, the kingdom will be taken from you and given to a nation bearing fruits and that's us. He took that signpost which the Jewish nation was supposed to be throughout the ages, they rejected the Messiah. Okay? And I'm saying that because we're going to talk about we're going to go back to tribulation. That's Daniel's 70th week. Okay? They turned around. They rejected Jesus. And when, G and when Jesus died on the cross and said, it is finished, Jewish time, all that time they had to be the signpost and serve God and set up, let other nations see what they were all about, they rejected the cornerstone. Amen. And now it's been given to us. And God has another seven years to deal with the Jewish nation. And that's what we're talking about because the tribulation specifically deals with the nation of Israel, not us. That's why the rapture. That's why we're going out of here. Amen. 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 So, then he talks about another parable, the parable of the wedding feast. And in this parable, it's about believers and unbelievers. Those invited to the wedding get thing, and then just bringing anybody in who wanted to come at the end, but a lot of them weren't saved. And, 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 and the, the, the Lord of the feast comes down and says, what are you doing here? And he said, take them out. They don't belong here. See, people try to make, make believe they're Christians. They try to well, trick us. And, and you have to be wise as a servant. Man. Wise as a servant. And gentle as a dove. You have to know how to deal with people. Hello. Thank you. Amen. 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 Just to tell you real excited about it. All right, let's go to Matthew chapter 24. 
Matthew chapter 20. And they're known as the, the, the uh, that's called the Temple Discourse. And now we're going to talk about the Mount, the Olivet Discourse. This is Jesus on the Mount of Olives. And it's interesting when you read through this, and Jesus actually, when, when you, uh, there's a verse of scripture where, let me go back here at the end. Okay, verse 24, verse 1. It says, Then Jesus went out and departed. Actually, one translation, Then Jesus went out once and for all and departed from the temple, and his disciples came up to show the buildings of the temple. Okay, let's see. Let me get to where my notes went on. All right. Then and, and this is very interesting because what happens here, the disciples are going to ask Jesus a couple of questions, okay? And remember, Matthew chapter 24, Matthew chapter 25 deals specifically with the Jewish people. Those that don't believe in Jesus. Jesus told them this is going to happen. And it all goes back. That's why I waited to do, that's why I did Daniel's 70 weeks in the beginning. Because this all, a lot of this refers back to Daniel's vision that he had. Okay, so verse 1, then Jesus went out and departed from the temple and, and his disciples came up to show him the buildings of the temple. I'm, I'm probably thinking, Jesus is probably thinking, but don't they know that I know about this, about this stuff for what, you know? Because they were very proud. And he goes, and Jesus said to them, do you not see all these things? I assure you, I say to you, not one stone shall be left here upon another that shall not be thrown down. Now the disciple, now as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, and they asked him three questions. He says, tell us when these things will be. Question number one. What will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? So he asked them three questions. And it's interesting because out of the three questions, all right, one is, two of them are answered in here, and one of them is answered over in Luke. Chapter 21, verses 12 through 20. And Jesus is describing what's going to take place. Let's hold your finger here. Let's go over to Luke chapter 20. 21, I'm sorry. Luke chapter 21. And we're not going to read the whole... Uh, Yeah, I just. Find the end. Is that verse five? No, I, I I know where I'm going. Okay, I I just don't want to read the whole thing. Okay. Uh, so it says here, in verse eight, he says, "Take heed that no one be deceived. For many will come in my name, saying, I am He, and the time has drawn near." These lights are terrible. Really bad lights here. When you hear, you know, and, and this is basically, we're going to see this in Matthew chapter 24. Uh, nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes. Talks about this. But, but before all these things, they will lay hands on you. They will persecute you, deliver you. And if we come down here, verse 20, this is the question that they ask them. When is this temple going to get thrown down? Okay? And here's what it says. But when you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, the armies are, are the Romans, okay, the Roman army. When you see the Jerusalem surrounded by armies, then know that the desolation is near. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let those who are in the midst of her depart. And let those who are in the country enter her. For these are the days of vengeance, and all things are written that they may be fulfilled. So what he's saying is, and, and literally, 70 years after Jesus told them that, Jerusalem was destroyed. And they're still fighting over the Dome of the Rock. Okay, I watched a great thing on, a, on Fox Nation. It's a, it was, what was his name? Uh, one of the guys, they went over there and, and they looked, they did, he went with the Jewish people how 
the temple, the temple, the center of the temple is directly yeah. under okay. that dome. Yeah. And the funny part was that Jews are not allowed to walk into that dome of the rock. But there's nothing that says they can't go underneath it. And they're underneath it. And he, they were shown how they were underneath it. They showed all the pathways and everything, the street that Jesus would actually walk down when he was crucified, the whole thing. It's absolutely amazing. And they still argued. They had they had the Muslims pitching their deal and the Jews pitching their deal and the Christians pitching their deal. You know, they were interviewing everybody. And the fellow who was doing it's a Christian, but the, the point being is they're still arguing and fighting over that. They don't know. In a few short years, the tribulation's coming and the Jews are getting it back. We live in great times. Okay, Matthew chapter 24. <coughs> yeah, we're back to Matthew. So tell us what these things will be and what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age. And Jesus answered to them and said, Take heed, take heed that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Now it doesn't bring that out over in Luke chapter 21. It doesn't say, but the end is not yet. And what this is talking about, it goes, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines, pestilence, earthquakes in various places. And we see that today, you know. Uh, I just believe God is setting things up for the rapture, you know, because it's not going to be all hunky-dory, all right? And things are going to happen. Even if you read through the book of Revelation, a lot of it all has to do with economics. The whole, everything has to do around money. That's why they, it says it's, money's not evil. It's the love of money that's evil. And that is the problem in the world today. Everybody wants more. Everybody, it's the love and the passion and the lust to get more. You know, you have to ask yourself, why do people have billions of dollars wear themselves out to get more? They can't spend it. But that's the problem. It's the love of money and that control. You know, there's only like maybe 10 families in the entire world that controls the entire world economy. People don't realize that, but, you know, a person who's a billionaire today is nothing compared to what some of these people are worth $100 billion, $200 billion. And they're the ones that literally control everything. All right? You know, I don't know if you ever watched The Godfather. But the one part where uh, where Rome was in control of all these major companies, they tried to get Michael Corleone in on it and all this other kind of stuff. But it's just there's just these big mega corp. I'll go one step further. Curry, how many own a Curry coffee pot? Do you know who owns Curry? It's a company from Germany, and the founder of the company was a Nazi yeah. who married a Jewish person. <laughs> That's uncanny. This is a true story, man. Married a Jewish person, a woman. She was a, a bookkeeper. He was married, but these two fell in love. His first wife never had any money. This woman, German Jewish lady, became a Nazi. The Nazis killed her father. This is the people that own Curry, Dr. Pepper, and the list goes on and on and on and on and on. When I tell you, there's major families that control everything. And when we get to the book of Revelation, we're not. I'm, that's what's it about, the economy. They control. You ever see the James Bond movies when one guy one? That is like, that's not fiction. It's fiction, but... That's happening in the world today. And I'm not a, what do they call them? Conspiracy theory? Yeah. Or theory? I'm just telling you, that's just the way it is. Okay? So, I'll give you an example. The guy who owns Facebook, he's, not, he's, a, he's a drop of rain in a bucket compared to these people. 
Okay, seriously. I mean, all Bill Gates, they're just drops in the bucket. Warren Buffett, he's a blink. <laughs> With all the money they have, and they're gazillionaires, billionaires, these other people, that's one of them. Anyway, so this, these guys, these kids now who control the company, they have an office in New York, an office in Germany. They found out the truth about their mother being Jewish and their father being a Nazi, mm. and now they're trying to like change the picture through publicity. Wow. That's like how I read all, and that's that's I was. I, could you imagine? I said all that simply because these verses four, five, six, and seven. The stuff we see happening in the world today. Wars, rumors of war, nations against nations. And we went through this. Uh, it says, innate wars, rumors of wars. See the year Na Nation will rise against nation. Kingdom against kingdom. The nation is the race. Things they have going on in other countries. Ethnic cleansing and all that. That's what that all means. And then kingdom against kingdom are countries fighting with one another. <coughs> Alright? And all these things we see it happen. We see earthquakes. I did a study on earthquakes. There are more earthquakes today than that there's ever been in the history that are occurring every single day that you don't even know about. Because they're minor, but they're occurring and they never occurred before. Okay? And, and this is what he says. There will be famines, pestilence, and earthquakes. And, and when you see these things on the rise, you know that the end is near. And the reason the end is near is because the earth is in travail. Mm. Like a pregnant woman. Matter of fact, they have sensors and, and this things flying around up there, the, the satellites, that the earth actually groans. Think about that. Mm -hmm. The earth actually groans, makes sounds, and the Bible says in Romans chapter 8 that it's growing, waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. The earth is waiting for Jesus to give birth to the saints that have died and us that are still here. Because verse 8, notice it goes, and these are the beginning. Verse 8 says they're the beginning. So, and then verse 9 starts something different. Verse 9 says, Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you. So between verse 8 and verse 9, something happens. It's called, on the side of my Bible, I have a big letter, the rapture. Something takes place between pestilence and earthquakes and in various places, and they will deliver you. The rapture takes place. So from verses 9 through the rest of this chapter... Through chap to verse, chapter 25 is all about the seven years of tribulation that's going to be here on the earth. And he, now we'll just read through this, and, and we're going to go through we're going to go through chapter 24 and 25, okay? And we'll flip back to Daniel in between. You know, we're not going to. I did get to check. I did get to Matthew 24 though. Mm -hmm. That's because I didn't do the parable of the marriage. If I did that, we wouldn't be here. All right. So then they will, the, let's, I'll just, just read down here up until verse 14. It says, Then they will deliver you up to the tribulation and kill you, and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. What nation is hated around the world today? Israel. And it's getting worse and worse and worse. It's even starting to spread in our country. Yeah. Our politics. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. And many will be offended. They will betray one another. And they will hate one another. There will be many false prophets rise up and deceive many. And because of lawlessness, and because lawlessness will abound, The love of many will grow cold, but he endures to the end shall be saved. And the gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to these nations, and then the end will come. 
So let's just, just look at this for just a minute and then we'll, we'll end because it's five of them. But when you look at this, there will be, many will be offended. You see that today? People are offended. Hey, come on, man. It's, and it's, it's going to get worse. It's starting. You can't say you got to be politically correct about anything. There was a pastor, in, I forget, it was in Georgia, North Carolina, I forget something. I said, he put a sign on his billboard in front of his church, America, love her and leave it. His congregation got so offended, they walked. Out. They all stood up Sunday morning and walked out. You know what the guy says? I'm going to put another sign up. He said, they don't like it, then they don't love Jesus. Get out of here. Just what he said. <laughs> like, wow, bro. America, love it or leave it, in the, in, in the congregation, I'm thinking, what have you been teaching them? You know, and all, all because of all the junk that's happening in, in Washington. Yep. But we see that people get offended. Could you imagine what it's going to be like when the holy, when the church is taken out of here? Oh, back up, regroup, brother. We're in trouble. They're going to betray one another. I just you know, listen. Remember the college scandal thing with all the, the actresses there over there, and you know, boy, boy, their friends turned on them in a minute. You know, they got caught with their hands in a cookie jar. Everybody does it, but they got caught, and all their Hollywood friends, none of them stood by them. They all just turned their back on them. Right. Betrayed them. Instead of standing with them, helping them, they betrayed them. That's just like the world. Amen. <clears throat> and hate one another. There's so much hate in the world today. And, and, and I say this because this is building up to the rapture. It's going to be so bad that when the rapture occurs, someone is going to rise up that's going to be able to calm everybody down and they're going to think he's a hero. Mm -hmm. And they're going to follow him like the Pied Piper. On, only the fi Especially as the things get more and more tense in the Middle East. Someone's going to rise up and solve that problem, and they're going to think he is the Messiah. Hello? That's just the way, I mean, you could go preach this like to your friends and relatives, they're going to say you've been smoking more peyote. <laughs> but it's the truth. It's the, I mean, how can you argue with the Bible? Okay? And, and then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. All that. Well, the lawlessness is out there. The love of the waxing cold is just an old English term. But the love of people is going to grow cold. They're just not going to care about anybody. It's me, and my four, and no more. You know, they're not going to care about other people, the needs of other people. They're just not going to do it. They're just worried about number one. And that's their love, there's no love. Just what's in it for me? All right? But he's, and here's, I hear preachers, preachers, but be a good soldier because he endures to the end shall be saved. Amen. I am saved. Amen. That's talking about those that get saved Amen. during the tribulation. Amen. If you endure till the end, and the next one is, and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all nations, and then the end will come. Let me explain something to you. We should be evangelizing the world now, and I think the church is doing a pretty good job. Amen. But I want to tell you something. The day of the rapture, evangelism is going to go from zero to 100% full speed ahead, bro. They're going to be cranking it out. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. They're just going to be cranking it out because people are going to go, whoa, what happened? What happened? And it's going to happen so fast, they're not going to, it's just going to happen that quick. You know, I've heard it, and we, we can close it. I, I've heard this, and I don't know how true it is, but they say they won't, some about got pilots in, in, in planes and stuff. They have some kind of rule. Because if you need some of these people don't follow the Bible, that they're pilots, kind of like one of them is a Christian. There has to be someone who believes in God 
flying with the other pilot in case one of them don't believe <laughs> and they get raptured. Somebody could land the plane. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Wow. I don't know. I've heard that so many times. I don't know if it's true or not. Or just wow. a bunch of bull. Some Christian was ate too much pepperoni pizza and came up with that. Or what. <laughs> but uh, you know, personally, it don't matter to me if a rapture comes. I'm on a plane. There you go. I'm just a little closer. I'm <laughs> <laughs> just thirty-six thousand feet closer. To there you go. To my compadres on planet Earth. I guess. <laughs> Amen. 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 Well, we'll come back to that a little bit next week and then we'll go on just a little bit <coughs> more praise God because when we start in verse 9 we'll, we'll start we'll come back to verse 9 and really take a really close deep look at this amen, amen. amen. praise the Lord hallelujah but all I can say is let's go up here Jesus is the answer amen.